Well, and you know, uh, again, I'm going to say this multiple times during this. I know I will, but again, for our folks to hear that. See, many officers across this country, they haven't had the opportunity to work with somebody like you, Mm -hmm. right? They haven't had that experience. Yeah. Uh, And then just the actual experiences that come along through the journeys of different stories, different events that develop, all those things. You were talking about that. You'll remember this. I'll never forget it. We had a time where we had a female officer that was shot and killed Mm -hmm. in our city. And um, Fanchon had us on live. We were talking. This is live in the, I don't know, 6 o'clock news, right? Yeah, yeah. She's at the anchor table. I'm on the phone and whatnot. And we had this officer that was killed. And for really about probably three to five minutes on live television news, in the middle of that tragedy, uh, she provided really the platform, not intentionally, just in in the moment in the moment where we were pointing to Christ and the cross and the peace that exists in the middle of the storm yeah. live on television news. People <laughs> people can't wrap their mind around that. And uh, you know, you think about that, here's the police and the news talking about this on the news cycle. And how many people did you hear complain about that? I didn't hear one not one because everybody needed that hope in the middle of it and it makes you think what if what if in all places all around this country you can have those moments of truth yes especially in very painful situations to have that hope there is where transformation can occur sure yeah. And that's what we're trying to do with this podcast, with Powerful. a biblical perspective on yeah. policing that's and right. life, yes. and hoping that far more people than just police see this, yeah. and it gives them that different angle on this. When you see the humanity behind the badge, see yes. the humanity right. behind the news desk or that television camera, uh, a lot of powerful things can happen. Well, I will tell you, media and what you guys are doing, just thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for being bold and following this calling um, that the Lord put on your hearts because I've always said this from the very beginning. The media is one of the most, if not the most powerful force. Oh, my Lord. In the right hands. In the right hands. It can be used for so much good. Yeah. Mm. Powerful good. In the wrong hands, with the wrong heart, and the wrong motivation, it can be such a destructive force. Yes, and I've can. been on the receiving end of both. I've been able to see through my career, which is such a blessing, and that's why I never backed down on using and finding ways to use the media for inspiration, for encouragement, for comfort, and for challenging things when things need to be appropriately challenged. But because I have been personally blessed to be able to see how God can transform a life through media Mm -hmm. and being a part of that, and also watching in other instances. But I've also been on the receiving end of how the media can be manipulated and misused for personal attacks, not just against myself, but against other people and what that does. Until you have walked through someone using the media or misusing the media to misrepresent or malign or attack your character, you have no idea what that feels like. And once you Every feel that. Every officer saying amen. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> once you feel that, A, you can spot it right away. That's right. But B, you never want, hopefully, anyone else to feel that same pain. So when we saw that movement across the country that was basically, and sadly it hasn't ended, but bashing police officers and doing all those things, I was very intentional about stopping a lot of time during the newscast and saying thank you to our officers. Hmm. When it was appropriate in stories, I, that was just not happenstance because I feel as though sometimes we get on these trains and society puts these things in place and people just kind of go along and, and for a while it felt like, well, wait a minute, as journalists, we should be saying, well, wait, yes, this is this, but what would happen if all of our police were defunded? What would happen if some of these oh, things would my. happen? And a lot of times we didn't hear that. You know, an officer would do something and you guys had to make intentional decisions in terms of putting positive stories and giving positive, and you shouldn't have had to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, we should be able to say to our officers, thank you for standing up. Thank you for responding That's in this right. situation. Thank you for those things. Even if every other voice is trying to propagate something else, That's right. we should be able to say and be able to see, especially in getting all the information we get that, hey, something's off here. Yeah. You know, this is not accurate. Let's look at that. Let's pull the let's pull the covers back and educate our communities 
and have these conversations in positive ways, not be a voice of propagating and repeating things that we know are not fair, That's not right. true, not true, not and fair. being misrepresented. Thank you. But that is a personal decision. Mm-hmm. You no, know, that that, and again, that goes back to what the individual heart. That's right. Yeah. And what you see as your role and what you see as your calling. I've been in many uh, countries, of course, doing missions work where there is no rule of law. The rule of law really is the the law of the jungle, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and I'm here to tell you, and the whole world, you do not want to live like that Mm-mm. because uh, a lot of officers are military men. They've come from our past and current wars, and um, and they've been out in jungles and up in the mountains of Afghanistan or in the streets of lawless Iraq or different areas of different nations, and they'll tell you, there is no rule of law. It's and whoever has the biggest hey, stick. That's exactly or right. Or the biggest megaphone. Or the biggest mm-hmm. megaphone. Yeah. And it's wicked. Yeah. And it's tough. I've been pulled out of a vehicle traveling through areas in other countries uh, where there are guerrilla military forces, and, and you're... And they can do whatever they want. Oh, you're, they can do whatever they want, and you're in the jungle, and it's their jungle, yeah. and it's dark, and, um, and and you don't know if you're going to make it out alive. Yeah. We yes. are so blessed. We to are live, blessed. To live in the country that we live in and, and we, to have thank the law enforcement that we have. We are so blessed. And, and until, like you said, until you experience something like that, um, you really don't understand. You don't understand. The blessing that it is to be to just be in this country, and we don't and want foremost. these people to disappear. No, if our law enforcement disappears, we're going to be in a huge mess. <laughs> um, and thankfully, you know, Rick has Rick, you've been such a voice of trying to. You've been like a watchman, mm. sounding right. the alarm. That's right. And you started sounding the alarm a few years ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I will. I remember when you um, had that press conference downtown Mm -hmm. after there was a shooting one weekend and you started saying then we have a serious problem with our criminal justice system the revolving door of the system we need to look at this and I was thinking okay now this is the time we're going to look at this we're going to expose this we're going to get this and it needed to be said and it needed to be exposed but there was unfortunately a concerted effort to silence that message and I don't know if people will say it, but I'm going to say it because I saw it. Mm. I watched it. Oh, so I and was, I was so on the, was and, behind and the scenes. I was behind the scenes yeah. on that. And I know for a fact that there were, myself included, people who were intimidated into trying not to help that message get out. That's right. And there were a few of us that said, we're not going to participate in that. But there, were, there was an effort. Well, we're not going to talk to him as much anymore. We're not going to do this. What? If you think about the effects that that right. had. You're talking about people's lives. Yes. How many people's lives may have been saved mm. if that message was handled correctly and honestly like it should have been. Thank you. And laws were looked at. Policies were looked at. Things Thank were you. challenged. People were held accountable for decisions that were being made we would not be in this in this position. And this is not an opinion. This is not a political thing. This is what I actually saw. Hmm. And it came from so people behind like the an scenes. Eyewitness here. Like, I mean, you're talking like an I'm like, talking about like my an eyewitness experience. And what you know. What I know a fact. to be a fact. There were people told, oh, well, if you, if you retweet this too many times, you know, you're going to put yourself in the middle of something that wasn't even ex- in existence. And when you don't have the um, confidence to know and to stand and you don't feel as though you're going to be back, sometimes you can capitulate to that. Right. But to watch that happen is, is heartbreaking. And then when it becomes so bad that you can't ignore it, mm-hmm. now to pretend like you've been, you know, you've been talking about this the whole time and yes, we need to do something about that. That is so hypocritical, but you wanna know, mm-hmm. I just challenge people who are in control of information and in control of the airwaves to, Guard your heart, first of all, against hardness yeah. and against motives that are detrimental mm. because we are watching families be torn apart. And Rick and there's <clears throat> been other leaders have been yelling about this. And Emphatic. now we're seeing this across the country. And this is not just a coincidence. That's right. 
You, you have to be yeah. blind to think that this is a coincidence. No, it's planned. That's what I was going to ask you. So, you know, you see the, you see the similarities going on in major cities across the nation. And you mentioned it earlier, but, you, you know, I, I, I had said it becomes the law of who has the biggest stick, and you said the biggest megaphone, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of people don't think about it that way. They think about, you know, violence and all those other things. But really, there's a lot more control and a lot more uh, direct, directing really just through who controls the messaging, yes. right? Yes, yes. Uh, and, uh, and I don't want to drive you down too far down this road. I know you've just transitioned out of media, but from this faith perspective, this issue of policing, this issue of relational tragedies that are occurring across the country, do you see that there is something to this where this influence of who's controlling the message, who is who is determining what will be talked about, what won't be talked about, is a detriment in the country or is it uh, is it on a positive track would you say that's a good question I'm going to answer it in two ways is it a detriment absolutely it's destroying the country Mm. because people are walking away with uh, impressions and information that they think is true and accurate and fair and it's not Wow. Um, is it getting better I would say it can, I believe, because there are more voices now, like this podcast, like some of the other podcasts. I think people are now seeing that something is really wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a manipulation of information? Yes. I mean, there is. Um, I could go on and tell a lot of stories about my personal experience with that, um, about what happens when you try and buck the system mm-hmm. and try and tell the truth. Um, Rick, you and I have talked about that a lot. Um, and a lot of times people say, oh, that's just a conspiracy. That's not happening. Just because the, so the person with the loudest oh. megaphone seems like that's what you hear all the time does not mean it's true. We are living in a post-truth society. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. That Check. means Come that on. people are being allowed to make up the truth based on their feelings, absent of actual facts and information and complete information. That's that how we get, very well, that's my truth. Dangerous. That's your truth. Yes, well, this yeah. is my truth. This is... No, there's an absolute truth. We need to agree on that there's an absolute truth. And then we can have the ability and the freedom to disagree, to challenge that. But once we start manipulating the truth, now we're at a very dangerous place. Mm-hmm. Because anything can be true. And the That's Bible exactly talks about right. what is going to happen in the last, in the last days. Mm-hmm. Good is going to be bad. Bad's going to be gonna good. Be Up's going to be down. Yeah. You know. So there is a, there, we're, in, we're in the times of deception right now. And I don't think people really realize how serious this is in terms of the deception that's being, that's being played. And the media is being used in many cases. I don't want to you know, paint a, a broad swath. But the media is being used in many cases to play a big part of this deception and people don't realize that and 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 it's heartbreaking because people are making decisions that are important based on not all the information based on just half of the information um and i it and when i think about the whole revolving door of the criminal justice system and i see every single night it almost makes me sick to my stomach because this could have been avoided there's, and Rick, you're not the only one talking about this. I know there's the um, FOP in New York. They were very vocal I mean, about this you, from the very beginning. There were so many people, and yeah. I, and, and so when I get a, when I get uh, Facebook messages and social media messages from people telling me to stop and telling me why are you talking to so and so about this and what, and I know this person is trying to bring the truth and trying to bring another side to the conversation. You don't want that side, then that tells me there's something wrong. So now mm-hmm. you're going to make me look at this even more. And now you're going to make right. me become even louder mm-hmm, because right. there must be some reason. I don't know you. Why are you calling me and trying to tell me not to do A, B, C? Don't talk to this person. Don't, you know, don't interview that person. Why? Everyone has a voice. Everyone's voice is equally as important. We may not all agree on everything, but my job as a journalist is to make sure every voice is that at the table. There's an equality of voices speaking. Yes. And I will tell you that Rick's voice and people who are trying to bring um, awareness about this, their voices were silenced. And that is not a conspiracy. That is not just an That's opinion. It is an absolute fact that that happened. And people in the community, I hope they realize that. You know, the things that were said about him, the things, those things, that's, that is all propaganda. 
and it's and it's and it's said by people who don't know him, don't know his That's heart. Right. That's right. Don't know the place where he's coming from. That's right. And that to me is so sad to see because in the meantime, when we, people are playing games, children are dying. That's right. That's people right. Are moms dying. are dying. Children's Dads are dying. Are Grandmas dying. are dying. Are dying. And it and doesn't absolutely. have to happen. And that's not just happening in one city. No, that's it's happening, happening across, across the country. country. And I think yeah. where you bring this uh, a different perspective to it is because you're looking at it through the lens of faith and understanding and uh, discernment as to what is actually going on, way above the politics of the day. This has way nothing above to do with the politics. The, right? right. Say it's, that it's, again. This has nothing to do with politics. Yeah. But see, here's the thing. If you went out on the street corner today and you surveyed the, the population walking by and you asked them what's at the root of all this, the number one response you would get is it's politics. It's all politics. And why is that? It's because it's the way it's portrayed in that's the media. It's, yeah, that's we it's we should be able to step in and say, hey, community, this is not about politics. This is about A, B, C, and D. And we need to look at this as a community because why our communities are being destroyed. Yeah. And it's not just one community. It's going to it's hitting every it's hitting and you've said every, that too. Yep. It's coming to a to a neighborhood near neighborhood you. I remember near you near saying you. that so many times and it's true. And everyone just wanted to pretend and I when I say everyone I don't want to speak in generalities because not everyone. There were people that were, you know, sure. trying to sound this alarm as well. Sure. But for the most part, the people with the megaphones wanted it to just go away or not it not, you know, uh, uh, I don't know what I don't it, know yeah. what their intention behind yeah. that was. But again, this is not a political fight that we're in. This is a spiritual a fight spiritual that path. we're in. Yep. And for those of us who have faith and who believe and who can see it, clearly God gives you very gives you a lot of clarity. Once you understand what's going on, you can't unsee what you see, you can't unknow what you know, and you can't forget what you've experienced. That's right. You know what I mean? And believers have to stand up. It's time to, we, we've it's got time to, stand to up. speak up That's and right. stand up because if not now, when? That's well, right. When are you gonna start? It's funny that you say that. So uh, there was an opportunity on live television, happened to be the same network, but where uh, many people remember that. Remember, we had the opportunity, and I was asked the question, what is it going to take to change all this, talking about the violence? Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll remember what I did was hold up this book. That's right. But the one thing that I closed with saying in there is exactly that. It's time for the church to come out of the four corners and contend for the faith, the four corners of their building, get out into the public square and contend for the faith. Same thing that we drive to our officers. Don't be ashamed of your faith. Don't allow somebody to put the basket over your light. Don't allow somebody, even if you're not, even if you don't know that you're a believer yet, Mm -hmm. you haven't taken that step in your own heart, but you know that there's something there. You know that you're serving a bigger calling than yourself. Explore that, step into it, lean into that, and find out what that's about. That's what I think people love about what they're watching and hearing here. And I can tell you they're going to love hearing it from somebody like you that they have known or not known. But to hear that other perspective, I can't stress enough how big it is what you said. This isn't a political issue, yet it's being framed as a political issue. Do you find that that's really just to be a distraction to people so that the actual what's going on can occur? Absolutely. Tell because us about that. Because if you're distracted that. over here, you're not paying attention to what's actually happening because you're distracted with so much noise mm-hmm. that's really noise based on smoke and mirrors. And this is going on nationwide. Nationwide. At a national nationwide. level. Yeah. And this is really not anything new. I think now it's just intensified. I, mm. I think this has always been going on. Sure. We just didn't really realize to what level it's been going on because a lot of people will say... You know, I did a uh, story on um, the sexualization of our children and obscene material in school curriculums. And people, I so many parents said to me, well, how did this happen all of a sudden? I'm like, this did not happen all of a sudden. All of a these sudden? seeds and these people and these, this pro- these programs have been planted all along. It's almost as if it's an organized crime. And I'm not saying that these people are criminals. What I'm saying is it's like you plant cells and then you activate the cells that's right mm-hmm. that's what's happening that's what's happening it's all it's been there but it's almost as if someone said okay now go it is and terrorism of the heart yes and and people feel like i'm sorry i didn't mean to hit the table you're people right? feel like it's happening all of a you're sudden preaching, girl but it's Amen. really not happening can all i prove of a it sudden. to you yeah can i prove it to you yeah i talk about this when i speak publicly to uh, citizen groups churches neighborhood groups whatever uh, the greatest example you've seen has been in the last two years. 
Yes. Look at 2020. Yes. I always say this. You can't get two politicians to agree on anything. Mm -hmm. Now, you're telling me, not you, but we're being told this is political. You can't get two politicians to agree on anything, even if they're of the same party. Yet in every major city across this country, we watched it come unraveled in riots and destruction like a flip of the switch. Yes. And you could literally watch it go as a wave from the, the East Coast across. to the West Coast yep. across the country. Let me take it one step further. And then you also saw it all shut off at the same time. Yes. How does that happen? Because it's being controlled and manipulated from behind the scenes. It's there's, clear as day. There's no way that's by happening. And I will give you another Absolutely. example of my no experience way. with that. And I'm not just speaking out of not knowing. I know for a fact that we knew when those things were happening in Indianapolis, we knew who was in town. We knew who, who was bust in. We knew who was b- giving bricks to people. We knew that. I made a call to, to, to you know, say we need to tell people this. We need to help people know what's going on and ignored. It was ignored. And that was why happening we, in every major city. It was happening in so every why major was city. It? So why wouldn't yeah. we as... As the media say, hey, there are these patterns that are very disturbing. You need we to have, be careful. We Don't have sources know. telling us from inside that they are watching for these particular groups and these particular people. And this is very dangerous. It seems coordinated. They're, they're, they're going mm-hmm. after certain things. Why wouldn't we tell people that? We had people who lost their lives. That's doing right. some of those altercations that maybe would have stayed inside had they known that. Mm. Do, you, oh, do you understand what oh, I'm saying? Oh, so much so that I have difficulty retaining my composure as we talk. And that's because, a heavy burden that's right. to carry, knowing I know it is. the calls I was making, the information I was getting, what I was being told. And, and as things went on, I started saying, okay, wait a minute, I can't not talk i can't not tell the truth when i know that there's something else going on and boy i was i was prepared but not really prepared for the intimidation the pushback all of those things um and i would gladly step into that because at again at the end of the day i know who i'm accountable to and once you see dishonesty once you see things i'm not saying everyone around me or everyone in the media did that or is doing that but i'm saying there are particular instances and particular um, powers that be or people who can try to intimidate you to to not speak or to say things or not to or to not say things Um, and you just have to be wise and discerning in in how you respond to those things but we have to be talking about the church we have to be bold right now to be bold and when we talk about you talked about bringing um our faith and not letting the, you know, our, our, the light of our faith be covered or dampened. Um, we have to be careful that we're t- always telling the truth. That's the right. truth. The truth. The truth. And not someone's opinion of what the truth is That's or exactly a right. deconstructed version of the truth or a watered down, minimalized Thank version you. of the truth because we are going to be held accountable for that. Yes, and people we are. who are in the position to carry people's souls and nurture people's souls and shepherd the flock, um, those people like yourselves are going to be held more accountable. Double judgment. Yes. Double and judgment. And that's a very serious You don't think thing. that's a serious thing in my heart? That the biblical worldview is very, very important. I tell all of our young preachers here, and even some who aren't so young, um, you better understand when you stand in this holy desk called a pulpit, my, my, mine is not a podium. That's what you find at the hotel. Yeah. Mine is a pulpit. It, I'm called by God to stand in that holy desk and open this holy book and share the truth. Yes. And I tell every young preacher, you have a deep responsibility, yes. regardless of whether it brings money to you or not, regardless of whether it brings prestige to you or not. That's right. You have a holy duty just like our cops do, to stand for the truth. Yes. The whole truth and nothing, nothing but, but the truth. truth. So help, help me, me God. God. Can you look up Acts 20, 24? I want to sure. um, read that because 
you know, when you're in a position like you're in and you're in a position and you're seeing things and the Lord, really, I will say, this is not me seeing and saying that this was really God, I believe, allowing me Mm -hmm. to see behind the veil and to understand. But he prepared me years before now to be able to understand what I'm seeing. Oh, yeah. It's one of my favorite verses to say now. Is it? Oh, yeah. Can you read that verse? (laughs) Because I'm not a quitter. Right. They'll tell you. Everybody that knows me will tell you. My sons will tell you. The Hollands don't quit. Well, this is the continence that we have to step in to every situation with, especially right now. And Rick, when you were talking about um, not letting anyone put out your your light and not letting him put you in a box and silence your voice because right now so many people need help and need hope and this is what we have to yeah. um, keep at the forefront of our hearts. Sure. It's so a- so the context of those of you watching, the context of the scripture is that Paul is facing certain things in the city that he's going to. The Holy Spirit, he says, yes. has already revealed to him in verse 23 the bonds and afflictions that are that await him, the trouble that's coming in his life. And instead of him saying, Man, I'm I'm asking the Lord, please don't make me go through this. Please, <laughs> Lord Jesus, let it let it be all gravy. And real he quick says, and real quick. I knew he couldn't help. That's himself. right where our officers, yes. the church, yes. believers, society as a whole, you go out here and talk to people, everybody will tell you almost to a person. I feel like this is getting ready to really go off the rails, oh, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So we're standing here on the precipice seeing what is probably coming our way. This is what people need to hear. Yes. And Paul says, but none of these things, none of these things. moved me. Hmm. None of them moved me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. That's the first thing a cop has to do. Amen. When they swear that oath, yes. they already know. They'll tell you right off the bat. Um. You look around in the academy, they'll say, uh, look around, because we were talking about it today. Two two of you may not be here tomorrow. That's right. The minute you graduate, there may be two of you that you're not going to be here. Yeah. We'll mm-hmm. be standing at your graveside. He says, none of these things move me, neither counted my life dear unto me, uh, so that I might finish my course. So if you're going to cling to your life, you're not going to finish your course. That's right. And you your go, course is your calling. That's what God calling. calls you to do in your life, wherever you are. That's you know, right. you may not be in a in a public position. You may not be a police officer. You may not be out there. You may just be a teacher. You may be a mom, a dad. Maybe you're a spouse of a police officer. A spouse officer. of a police officer. Like a child, like my yeah. wife. I'm your calling be. is to serve yeah. in that capacity where God has you. He says, yeah. uh, I finished my course with joy. With joy. Now, this word joy in the Greek is the word kara. It mm-hmm. means a deep-seated confidence mm-hmm. that no matter how bad it looks, God's going to work it out. Yeah. He's going to make it work. <laughs> and no <laughs> matter how much you get threatened That's right. or intimidated or bullied, even if we're threatened with our life, yeah, we no know that's coming. Guess what? If someone's going to put me in the arms of Jesus sooner, all right. Well, what is? What do I have? What, I, you don't no, have what anything I, to lose as a Christian. Nothing to lose. But the, one oh of my, my own, one of my other favorite scriptures Woo. is, "What can a mere mortal do to me? Mm. That's Nothing." Right. Mm. That's right. If you have Jesus, and if you have your faith, and if you have you understand, and you have truth and wisdom and sermon, and all of those yeah. things, what can a person do to you? Nothing. But until Therein, we understand that, there you go. and the power of that, therein lies the yeah. people controlling the megaphones. Yes. That's what right. they're trying to keep you from seeing, exactly. what That's they're right. trying to distract you from. Yes. It isn't the politics. No. It isn't the political agenda. It isn't whose life matters, all this other stuff. It is trying to keep you from seeing the truth that if you discover that freedom exactly. of being unafraid of man, but having a fear of God, the one who's called you to these things, That's right. then they can't control you. No. People can't control you. No. Man can't control no. you. If you know who you are, Hmm. in him and you are made in the image of the almighty God and whose you are a daughter and a son of the king of kings once you choose to walk with him and believe in him and give your heart and your life to him you have nothing to fear I had to learn that over so many decades and about a year and a half or two years ago I started praying and asking God God what does my name mean because you know in the Bible Names are very significant. Hmm. And I was like, Fanchon, okay, what does that mean? I know that it's French. My parents wanted the French name. And if you look it up in a baby book, it says freedom. 
So I'm like, well, God, what does it mean? I mean, <laughs> is it significant? I mean, how does it relate to me? Do I have a free spirit? I don't, I don't know. But I want to know, God, what is it that you purposed in my name for me? Good ball. And I started praying about that. Yeah. And in my devotion and prayer time, one morning, the Lord took me to, I think it's in Galatians, and he basically told me and showed me, I have freed you to trust in Christ alone. Alone. There you go. Alone. He had to free me from Christ fear alone. of losing a job, fear of man, Come on. idolizing a marriage, <laughs> looking at a person or, 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 or people for my value, <laughs> looking at all <laughs> those things. Once the Lord frees you from the fear of someone taking your job, then you can stand up and say something. Yes, Once can. the Lord frees you from looking to man for your value and looking to man for acceptance and, and all of those things, you are free to then stand. How about that? You're free. You're free. I was never fully free and I didn't understand that, but the Lord purposed me and made me and gave me a name. You are free. And now I can look back in my life and I want you to, everyone listening and watching, I want you to hear this. The enemy uses things in your life to inject doubt, to make you try and doubt God. Well, is he really there if that happened? In your deepest, darkest trials, that is when God shows up the most and most real if you will allow him to show you right. how far he will go to love you, to rescue you, to pick you up. If you allow him to show you that, he's going to free you and break you of those That's things. Right. Just because something is hard does not mean God is not there. That's when he has the opportunity to really step in. You get to know him personally and That's intimately. Right. He wants us intimately involved with intimately him. He wants involved. to know us. And yep. that takes time reading, studying, allowing him to transform your mind and your heart. And once you do that, you are going to start this transformation process where you begin to see like Jesus, love like Jesus, serve like Jesus, feel like he feels. And then you'll be able to love what he loves and hate what he hates. Mm. There you go. And God is very clear in terms of what those things are. That's right. And it's not going to be hard. It's not going to be confusing. But I think a lot of times disappointment in our life, trauma in our life, hardship, heartache, death, sickness, all of those things, the enemy means for those things to make us doubt God and make us doubt his love for us and make us doubt truth and reality. But God purposes those things to refine us, to mold us, to really give us the opportunity to know him more intimately That's and right. deeply. And if we allow him that, there's so much freedom in that. Now, mm. Paul says that Paul says that unmovable, unmovable, or it didn't move me in Acts. Mm -hmm. So you stand firm yeah. in Jesus Christ and the calling mm -hmm. that Paul had on his life. And some people might say, oh yeah, but that was the apostle Paul. I mean, yeah, that's the apostle Paul. But the scripture I read earlier is the apostle Paul telling the entire church of Corinthians, that's right. right. You stand strong yes. and unmovable. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Rick and I trust that you heard something that will help your life. And if you believe that it would help others, please make sure and share. Like and subscribe and hit that bell so that you can be notified when the next podcast is available. God bless you and we'll see you soon.